Hello everyone and welcome to Traveling with Francoise. I'm Francoise Rhodes. I today am sitting in some shade because I don't want to be squinting and I want to be able to see perhaps what you have to say or where you're from and what's going on in your world. Yeah, I feel a little close to the camera. I'm so used to being the tripod being kind of far away. Anyway, great to have you with us today. I know some of you are still watching Craig on his walkabout in Palm Springs. He's been going, he's been walking about for an hour now, so he'll probably wind down. But I'm coming to you from Palm Desert. Actually, I'm sitting in my patio where it is a cool 77 degrees out here in Palm Desert. So I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's weekend. I had a very eventful week, <laughs> kind of a crazy week. But again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Traveling with Francoise. Hello, how are you out there? Let's see. Akatar, Akatar, hi, hi. Uh, you know me in names. I always try them. Whether I get them right or wrong, I try them. In fact, this morning I was spelling Francoise to somebody and they were really confused and then they go, oh, Francoise, I get it. So anyway, welcome to Traveling with Francoise. I am Francoise Rhodes and great to have you with us. All right, so just want to give you a heads up for those of you, oops, okay, I just banged the table and I think I banged the, let me see what I do to that camera there. Ah, hold on. I was trying a little bit different holder. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, Lane. How are you? And actually, I banged the table and the whole thing fell apart. So I am sitting in my patio. The golf course is over that way, but I didn't want to be squinting today. I just, you know, didn't try to do the squinting thing. So uh, I decided to sit in the shade. So anyway, thanks for joining me. So I am going to be doing some changes to the show. I'm going to be revamping the show just a little bit. Um, Craig and I were talking the other day. I think I'm going to change the show from Sundays to Wednesdays. I'll let you know exactly when all this is going to happen. I'm going to be doing it in Borrego Springs. So I'll be at a different location from each shoot. And it's not going to be all about Borrego Springs, but it's going to be with a different background in every place. Because there's so many things out there that you should be seeing. It's just crazy. And so I'll be moving the show around from where I do the show. And again, like I say, I'll be doing it in the middle of the week, but of course it'll be posted so you can watch it all week long anywhere. So hi, Lucy. How are you? Great to see you. Um, so anyway, great to have you all with me today. I know it's a busy, beautiful Sunday. There's golf on, all sorts of sports on. A lot of people are out golfing and walking and hanging out in downtown Palm Springs downtown Palm Desert, out in Borrego Springs. You guys are all over the place. So anyway, like I say, I'll give you a heads up as we move more into this, but I will be at some point changing the show to a different day. And like I say, coming to you from a different location, from a different background. All right? Okay. So I hope you had a great week. I had kind of a, you know, up and down week. Yeah, I know. I got a chip in my windshield. That kind of started it all. It, you know how you get a tiny little, next thing you know, it's a little pop. And there you go. So I'm going to have to get that fixed. But then I also got a speeding ticket. Yeah, I'm going to admit it right up front. I got a speeding ticket going to Borrego Springs. And I know, tears running down my face. But what I did learn from this speeding ticket is, San Diego County, now heads up everybody, in San Diego County, all the two-lane roads the speed limit is 55 miles per hour. Now, I didn't see a sign anywhere, posted sign. I saw one. Within a 20-mile span, there's maybe one. But just heads up, two-lane highways in San Diego County, 55 miles per hour. All right. So, hi, Dennis. How are you doing over there? Wherever you're from, where are you guys from? Why don't you tell me where you're from? Let everybody else know where you're from. I'm coming from Palm Desert, California, and there has been a lot going on in the world of travel. Yeah, I mean, they're cha it's changing so rapidly. As soon as um, restaurants were able to have outdoor seating, that opened up a whole new market. Of course, then the hotels were able to open up more, not to just people that are, are working and traveling, but to actual travelers. So the whole dynamic of travel has changed so quickly. It's uh, hard to keep up, but harder to make sure that everything anyone says is current because within a day or two, it could be changing. And again, I'm Francoise Rhodes. So hi everyone, thanks for joining me today on Live Traveling with Francoise. So again, tell me where you're from. Tell everybody where you're from. 
and I'm from my patio here in Palm Desert today. But again, like I say, changes are near for this show. I've been on the air 20 years now, so I'm kind of getting the bug and I need to, I don't know, the pandemic kind of brought a stall to everything, but now it's time to open it up. So before I get into travel news, how about you readers out there? Who likes to read? Okay, somebody I know wrote this book. Actually, it's a series of books. And who is this? Uh, Melody from Palm Desert. Here from Palm Desert. Yeah. Okay. And that's great. We love Palm Desert. Anyway, if you like travel, little romance, little murder, little mystery, this book called Mistrust is very, very good. I sat down. I read it in two evenings. And I, I would read and stop. I read it one evening. I read half of it one night and the second half the other night. And that's pretty hard to do. I mean, a book has to really capture me to do that. I love this book. It takes you into Mexico. It takes you all through Southern California. So if you want a little bit of travel, intrigue, try this. Mistrust by Kathleen Helms. Now, actually, I've met the author a few times. Her husband has been working at the airport in Borrego Springs. It's funny how things all tie together. And I got the first copy and was hooked. There's another. There's This is the third. Uh, the third of the... I would say a sequel trilogy and hey Gary how are you but anyway mistrust a loyal Truesdale novel check it out now I'm not gonna slam this on the table because everything's gonna fall apart I did that earlier hey Gary I hear you're going to Borrego Springs I hear you signed up and I will tell everyone about the bus trip to Borrego Springs coming up in April with ACT tours and if you missed any part of the show which I know a lot of you hop around and you're looking at all sorts of things this will be on the website traveling with Francoise it will also be on the Facebook page of traveling with Francoise and today's California and Coachella Valley those Facebook pages so not to worry if you miss something you'll be able to see it and when I go to Wednesdays same thing I will be sharing it all over so if you don't watch it on Wednesday you can watch it on Thursday you can also watch it on Sunday. You can watch it whenever you want to. So we have Olga from Van Nuys, California. Well, where is everybody outside of California? But I'm glad all you California people are watching because we are, we're pretty cool. We have problems like everywhere else with Californians. I'm a native, by the way, just so you know. All right, anyway, so we have the Brago Springs trip coming up, bus trips. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute but again i want to welcome you all to the show traveling with francois like i say this week's been crazy chipped windshield uh ticket for speeding which i'm not going to deny that i wasn't going a little fast but uh, anyway so i will have to go to school hi dan how are you did craig finally wind up to, did he finally quit walking over there craig was walking all over today's california yeah there he is craig is, was all over palm springs it was a great walkabout uh i really think he had to bottle those walkabouts and market them because they're fantastic and you guys just love them from all over the world you were looking at downtown palm springs which i would say palm springs palm desert all of our nine cities here in the coachella valley they have been very busy so we want to give a shout out to all of them so uh, yes, masks are still um, required. I, I don't like to use the word required. We would hope you would have the good common sense to wear them and make everyone comfortable around you. In fact, I had an incident at the last farmer's market. There was a lady there, and I'm going to tell you this out in Borrego Springs, and I, I thanked everyone. There was a lady that was going up to the produce stand without a mask on, and everyone else had one on, everybody else waiting in line, and she just starts you know, touching everything. And finally, everyone said, look, stop. You don't have a mask. You're breathing on everything. Please get your items. We'll let you go to the head of the line and, and leave. She was so uncomfortable, and she started coming up with all these excuses that nobody wanted to hear. She did get her stuff and leave. But the point of that was that I didn't have to say a word. And everyone was very polite about it. They just told her how they felt. And she got the picture. So I'm not saying that that's what... Well, you know what? Sometimes that's what needs to be done. Because if we all want to be comfortable, we do kind of have to rally together and politely tell people how we feel. Okay, no yelling, screaming, nothing violent. I'm not in, into any of that. Okay. All right, travel industry. What is going on in the travel industry? Well, here are your thoughts for travel in 2021, 48% of Americans are optimistic about travel in 2021. That's good news. I like hearing that. 45% believe travel will return to pre-pandemic levels of normalcy this year. 
However, 55% say they are uncertain if travel will ever return to normal without restrictions. That right there, I don't know. I, I do think restrictions will be in place for a long time. Maybe not as tight of restrictions, but now there will always be on the lookout for something. If it happened once, it could happen again. And you do think with our World Health Organization and CDC and all these centers that are supposed to be constantly looking into disease, diseases coming from other countries, disease control, how was this one missed? How could they miss this one? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we were just all too complacent, but I don't think we're going to be. 58% plan to travel in 2021. And one third of those plan to vacation as early as spring break, which is right around the corner. And for all of you, all of you in the snowbound areas, I am sure that coming out to places like the Coachella Valley, also the deserts of Southern California, Southern United States, Arizona, and the Las Vegas, I'm sure these are looking very inviting to you right about now. Frankly, I can't imagine how you do it. Uh, heat, at least in the heat, we can go out in the evening, we can jump in the pool. We, it's just different with that cold. I don't know how you warm up after being frozen for months and months. Right now it's 77 degrees here in the patio here in Palm Desert, California, and it's so great to have you. I am Francoise Rhodes, and this is Traveling with Francoise. All right, back to the latest survey that I have read that I really enjoyed, 57 Percent of respondents say it's been a year or more since they've taken a vacation. Have you taken a vacation in the last year? I am. Tell us about it. 48% say they will feel safe flying in 2021. So right now you're feeling better about flying. That number jumps to 80% though in 2022. A lot of you are waiting to fly in 2022. Not so much now because you are buying those RVs like crazy. We'll talk about that in a minute. And only 25% of Americans flew in 2020, which I'm surprised it was even that amount. And I'm sure they are, had some very good reasons to do so. For those not traveling in 2021, your top reasons, and see if your top reasons are in this top five. Number one is safety. Number two is budget, which um, yes, for those that are out of work, very budget conscious, very tight with the dollar. But on the flip side, for those of you that have those extra spending dollars, now would be the time to travel just because it is, um, there's a lot of deals out there. And I'm looking at that awning. I'm wondering if I should put the awning. All right, I'm not going to put the awning in. I'm just looking at it. Things just pop into my head, so I talk about them. All right, so number one, safety. Number two, budget. Number three, dining entertainment restrictions. Bingo. That's a big one for me. I'm trying to put some television episodes together, some new ones, but I don't want to do it if I can't get into the museums, if I can't get into the restaurants. Uh, it's very difficult. So that right there puts a damper on traveling for me. Uh, number four was traveling, flying restrictions. We'll get used to it because we're going to have them. And number five is you can't take the time off work. For a lot of people, that's a that's a great dilemma to have, that you can't take the time off of work. You're that busy. So good for you. I applaud you. So what else is happening in the world of travel and cruising? Globus. Now here are where some of these new restrictions are going to come in. I know they're going to change all the time, but get used to it now. Hear them now because who knows, you might be traveling sooner than you think and you'll have a little idea of what's going on out there. Globus will require COVID-19 vaccine, negative test or immunity. The new rule for travel with the company's brands, which include Avalon Waterways, will take effect in April. So there are a lot of changes coming up in April. The American Queen Steamboat Company and Victory Cruise Lines have mandated that passengers be vaccinated in order to sell beginning July 1. So, but I don't know how they're going to monitor all this when the vaccinations have been delayed. Um, the snowbound areas, people aren't getting vaccinations. We're behind in getting everyone vaccinated. So this is gonna have a ripple effect over everything going on in the world of travel. So are concessions gonna be made? I don't know, we'll find out. Crystal Cruise Lines makes it clear, no vaccine, no cruise. Boom, that's it. You ever been on a Crystal Cruise? They are fantastic, yes. This requirement will apply to sailings on ocean and river ships that will apply, excuse me, on both. 
So there we are, restrictions are coming. On the land, MGM Resorts enjoys a booking boom in Vegas. The company saw its strongest gross bookings in January since the start of the pandemic. Well, good for them, because I have a couple friends that work in Las Vegas, and they say it is um, very strange there, what's going on in Las Vegas. Just the, um, the feeling is different. Um, the way people interact and move around is different. They're coming, but they're not coming. So this is a strange time for the people that, that work and live in Vegas that are used to the nonstop 24 seven life that goes on in Vegas. That's what I like about Vegas, um, Nashville, New York, places that have this different vibe and Vegas, will that vibe ever be the same? I don't know, we'll see. Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Casino Resort will officially open its doors on March 25th. So that's a new place to look forward to. They keep on building everywhere. They keep on building out here. In fact, today in the paper, they talked about this huge arena that's going to be happening over by the Classic Club by the 10 Freeway. This is going to have music events, all sporting events. It is going to be gigantic and they are moving ahead with this project. So they obviously see that things are going to come back to the Coachella Valley. They have to, they have to come back to everywhere. Um, I just, you know, they just, life does have to resume what life should be about, which is enjoying it and having fun. That's what, that's what I think. The UK opens its first quarantine hotels for arriving travelers. Passengers arriving at London's Heathrow Airport were escorted by security guards to buses that took them to nearby hotels. I'm surprised this hasn't happened sooner. I think it's very smart on their part, and I've told you from day one, if you are going to be traveling, you really need to factor in that quarantine period and uh, budget, budget it as far as money goes as well because they are not free. So make sure that you know what's going to happen to you once you get to a destination. And in the air, the White House appears to back away from COVID testing for U.S. flights. Airlines and the broader U.S. travel industry have roundly opposed the testing proposal for domestic flights, which was floated by the CDC in late January. So the White House is not pushing for COVID testing for the U.S. flights, but we'll see. There is going to be, there are the airlines that are saying you can't fly unless you have a test, a negative test. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The White House maybe has decided that they'll back away and let the airlines dictate what the airlines want to do. Which, I guess, then it's all about choices. If we want to go on an airline, then you can only fly on it if you are a negative COVID person then that would be the airline that you would want to take. If you would want to fly on an airline where whatever, then that's your choice. All of this comes down to choices. We all have to make them. Do we want to go there, be there, go to a movie, go to an amusement park? I don't know. It's all going to be coming down to us. And I'm Francoise Rose, by the way. I'm sitting in my patio here in Palm Desert. It is 70. It's dropped out a little. It's now 76 degrees. The sky is blue. You can see that in the reflection of the glass behind me. Of course, I have my awning out just a little bit. I should have put it in, but oh well. I didn't feel like this, having the sun shining in my eyes today. Also in the air, JetBlue has become the last of the six largest U.S. airlines to do away with change fees long term. The move will apply to all JetBlue fares except its basic economy tickets called Blue Basic. The carrier said Tuesday that Blue Extra ticket holders will never pay a change fee going forward. Never. However, because I'm reading this, I'm saying, okay, never. That's what you're saying, never. Those booking its Blue, Blue Plus, and Mint fares will also not be asked to pay change fees, with the exception of a $75 fee for changes made on the day of the travel. And all of this goes into effect April 1st. A lot of things are happening April 1st. Taxes are due April 15th. Couldn't they have waited? Couldn't they wait just a little bit longer? No. Blue basic ticket holders, however, will be subject to a $100 change fee on most routes beginning April 1. So even though never for the blue extra ticket holders, but everyone else, there's a little bit of leeway in there so again check what's going on all right act tours they have a bunch of day tours coming up and i bring this up to you because some of you do want to go and do things 
some of you are going and buying RVs from Mike Thompson RV. I talked to Sherry yesterday and she said they are, it's crazy what's going on in the world of RVs. And it's funny watching people who have never driven an RV decide to back an RV up. That is like when I used to, uh, when I sailed around for 10 years on the boat, more in the harbor and watch the people that never picked up or dropped an anchor or picked up a mooring and didn't have a clue what they were doing. It's pretty funny. After a couple misses and a couple hitting other boats and stuff, they'd get it. Same thing with RV people. But anyway, ACT Tours has a bunch of March trips that you might be interested in. Catalina Island, Wolf Mountain Sanctuary, St. Patrick's Day at Temecula Valley Vineyards, highlights of Los Angeles and Hollywood and the beautiful beach cities. You can find all this information on their website, which is act-tours.com. In April, there is a trip to Borrego Springs. Yes, and that, it says Super Bloom, but I wanna give everybody a heads up, there's not gonna be a Super Bloom this year. No Super Bloom in Borrego Springs, not enough rain, just not gonna happen. There will be flowers, but no Super Bloom. But on April 8th, a spring trip to Borrego Springs and the Anza Borrego Desert State Park is going to happen. You'll stop at the chamber first. I will meet you and hopefully I'll be able to hop on the bus and go have lunch with you. And that is $99. For more information, and this is all through ACT Tours, not me. They've set the whole thing up. I'm just excited to have some buses coming back out to Borrego. Also, Africa Vacations. They have two exciting Africa Vacations coming up. The Great Migration, September. You can sign up for that as well. So again, go to their website, act-tours.com. So as you can, you can mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you keep talking straight for almost half an hour now. Craig knows what it's feeling like. You keep going and your mind kind of gets ahead of your mouth. I want to give a heads up to Johannes in Palm Springs. They have uh, their food to go and they should be opening their patio dining pretty darn quick now. So that's Johannes in Palm Springs. I want to give all my sponsors a heads up. I want to thank them so much. Bruce Titus, VW of Palm Springs. I wonder if they can fix my windshield. Hmm, I'll check on that. Uh, let's see. Diane Williams and Associates Real Estate, Indian Ridge Country Club, Mike Thompson's RV Superstore. They are selling RVs like crazy. Toy holders, you name it. They have it all there. So check it out. If you're not into the, the uh, tent type camping with sleeping bags, I think RVing is the way to go. All right, Brega Springs Resort and Spa, they are open and they're doing a phenomenal job out there. A1 Custom Golf Cars and Desert Battery, I'm going to be doing a special commercial for them coming up. So that should be some fun with testimonials and, uh, and some different kind of golf cars. That'll be interesting. Let's see, ACT Tours, Dana Wharf Whale Watching, Cabot's Pueblo Museum. Yes, don't forget the Cabot's. In fact, it'd probably be fun to go up there and do a show from the Cabot's with them as the backdrop. So, like I say, I'm looking to make some changes with the show, but I'll give you plenty of heads up. And remember, you can always go to the website Traveling with Francoise. And Arc Attire, they are doing my hats for the Borrego Spring Chamber, so I want to give a shout out to them. Thank them so much. And I hope all of you out there are having a really wonderful day. It's uh, beautiful here in the desert. We've had a little bit of wind, but you know, no weather's going to be perfect all the time, everywhere. If there is a place such as that, maybe Tahiti, I don't know. I haven't found it yet, but I'm hoping you have a safe, great week. Again, today I just um, I'm regrouping from a lot of things, and again, we'll be bringing some changes your way. Craig and I are talking about some changes for just about everything, and he is the mastermind behind all this technology stuff online, but anyway, it's. Uh, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. I think you'll find it interesting, and it'll um, be fun for me as well. All right. Okay, everyone, I want you to have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Next week, who knows where we'll be, but we'll all be somewhere. Gary, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Can't wait to see you on a bus trip to Borrego Springs. Everyone, enjoy yourselves. Go out, play some golf. Go out, enjoy the beautiful weather outside. And remember, it's never too late to get a life. See you next time. Bye.